Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Concept Knives Warrior. Another interesting design from Concept. This knife was sent to me directly by Concept. So thank you very much Concept. I'll give you guys a look at their logo and the spelling of their name. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, um, this is there, there were a lot of designers who moved from Kaiser to Concept, and so this is this company is the realization of that. Um, and uh, yeah, I've actually uh, handled three knives from them now, and uh, the quality is definitely, definitely there. This is an interesting design. They gave me a choice of the knives that I wanted to take a look at, and uh, this profile was appealing to me, so I said, yes, please, I'd like to look at that. So I do appreciate you sending this knife for review. Uh, also, I want to say thank you to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. If you'd like to get your hands on these cool stickers and some other benefits, there's, of course, a link down in the description. Your support would absolutely mean the world to me. And please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. All right, let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. Overall length of the uh, Warrior is coming in at right about right at eight inches. Uh, blade length is coming in at exactly three and a half inches and then your cutting edge is coming in about uh three and a and a 3.4 inches something like that very similar to the cryo let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the ontario rat model one the rat one is coming in at 8.6 inches overall so it's a little bit shorter than the rat one how about up against the spyderco pm2 spyderco pm2 is coming in at 8.3 inches overall uh, how about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Ritter Hogue is coming in at 8 inches overall, so very similar in overall length to the Ritter Hogue. You can see there, this has more of a slender profile, not quite as tall of a blade or handle. Last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. Spyderco Para 3 coming in at 7 and a quarter inches overall. How's the action of this guy? It's pretty good. Um, let me take a look here at the inside. So this is, I wonder if this is going to be bright enough. Flashlight is the uh, MSR D4V2. You can find that down in the description there. Uh, to my knowledge, running on bearings. And I'm trying to see in my light. Yeah, it is running on bearings. There's a little bit of friction in there. It's not a gritty friction. It's just tightness. So uh, the benefit to that is, is that it does not come flying down on your fingers. Um, but it takes a couple of shakes to get it down. It's all right. The position of the thumb stud is great. I've got no problem flicking this thing out. The detent is clicky. And you can do the reverse flick with it as well. So as far as manipulation goes, it's just fine. Uh, if, you, if you're somebody who really likes the luxury of the, uh, the super glassy smooth action, um, then this might not 100% be your cup of tea. But it is smooth enough. It's certainly, there are other knives in this price range that are, uh, you know, very, very similar. Um, it's not quite as smooth as the Cryo, but it, it's, it's all right. It's acceptable for this price range. Um, let's go ahead and do uh, carry profile. Actually, you know what? Let's do the hardware check. Get out my uh, tools here. You can find my tools down in the description as well, very near where I've got the flashlights set up there. Pivot, I'm going to guess, just based on the cryo, I'm going to guess this is a T10 pivot. Let's go ahead and give that a try. Nope, it's going to be a T8. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's, pull the, let's pull the T8 here real quick. Give that a go. Yeah. T8, and then I'm not even going to check the uh, body screws because I know for a fact that those are T6. They're one size smaller than the pivot. Uh, you guys know the uh, the drill here. I don't like T6. I'd prefer, you know, uh, that we go T8 or higher so that we uh, have less of a risk of the hardware stripping or the bits that you're using stripping, right? It's not that big of a deal. Just be really careful with your when you're disassembling it. Um, it shouldn't be a reason not to buy the knife. Um, there are a few extra screws given that we have. It's... Uh, it's a titanium frame lock where the there are overlays resting in this area that's been cut out. Um, so some people might call this a bolster lock. Uh, it's a it, it's a pretty large bolster lock. We're going to call it. it's a frame lock to me um, with uh, some overlays resting in this area that's cut out right here. So however you wanted to find that, it's a very long winded way of saying that. Um, let's go ahead and do carry profiles so up against the Spyderco Para Three. You can see there it's just a hair thicker. Just just a tad thicker than the Spyderco Para 3. Uh, let's go ahead and do length and height up against two knives that are a little, little bit awkward in profile, but nobody ever really complains about the PM2 and Para 3. Overall length, just a hair longer than the Para 3, or eh, a little bit more than a hair longer than the Para 3, uh, and then still shorter than the PM2. But 
in terms of height. Uh, yeah, this is definitely a winner. Um, nowhere near as tall as either the PM2 or Para 3 because there's no hump or ramp in the thing. Uh, let's go ahead and do blade stock thickness. Uh, this is, it, for whatever reason, it appears really thick on this knife. Um, but uh, I think it's probably about 155 thousandths or so like the cryo. Yeah, it's coming in exactly. This is 157 thousandths, exactly the same as the cryo. I don't know that it really needs to be that thick. Um, you know, sometimes there's a, like some people just enjoy the novelty of a, of a thick blade, but I think this is a bit excessively thick, especially for a knife that has a profile like this. I just would expect the blade to be a little bit thinner. Um, we'll talk about the blade here in a sec. That's, that's fine. No big deal. The inside here, I don't believe there's any milling because of the design. Yeah, no milling on the inside of the scale. So that's fine. It does have carbon fiber and DLC coated titanium. Let's go ahead and weigh it. I have to reset this. Uh, weight on the, uh, the, um, uh, concept warrior coming in at a surprising 3.67 ounces, despite there not being milling on the inside and the blade stock being a little bit thick, this is a pretty darn good weight. 3.67 ounces. Let me make sure that that's accurate. Yeah. 3.67 ounces. Wow. Okay. So as far as, uh, the ratios go, you know, that ounce and inch mark, it's almost right there. It's under the four ounce mark, right? It's still a big knife not a super thin knife. So for people who have been regularly carrying the Spyderco Para 3 lightweight and bug out, uh, you might not enjoy this as much. People, uh, you know, who like to wear athletic shorts or sweatpants every day, definitely not going to be something you're going to enjoy in the pocket as much. Uh, and then skinny jeans, probably not. It's not thick, but it's not a thin knife. You know, for people who walking around in regular pants, work pants, jeans, whatever, and you're used to a full size knife and you can legally carry a blade uh, of uh, 3.5 inches in your area, then I think you're gonna like this. I don't think it's a problem. Honestly, that that's pretty impressive. This is one of those knives where it feels heavier than it is though. The profile's great, but I honestly thought, eh, this is gonna be four, four and a quarter. No, 3.67, 3.7, something like that. All right, did we get through that all the way? Let's go ahead and take a look at this. So uh, this will be uh, linked down below along uh, in all the different variants. There are multiple variants of this knife. And I'll also be linking concept knives in general so you guys can shop and see what all is available. This version that I opted for has the DLC uh, uh, titanium and then it's got the uh, marble carbon fiber. The carbon fiber looks great. Um, there are a couple of little spots here you can see that are voids. Um, every knife that I, you know, I, I say looks great and then I'm like, there's voids. Um, marble carbon fiber, as far as I know, in this price range is likely to come with a few spots like that. Um, it, it, only a few times have I seen absolutely perfect voidless marble carbon fiber, and it's generally exclusive to, uh, you know, really, really expensive knives. This is an expensive knife, but, you know, the, the only time I've really ever seen voidless marble carbon fiber is, you know, four, five, six, seven hundred. It's usually even higher, you know, uh, up on the higher end of that. Um, I don't necessarily consider that a problem. It can be an eyesore, and in some cases, you know, you if you order this knife, yours might have more or less. Um, does it cause a utilitarian issue? No, it is uh, simply the result of the process that is used to create this carbon fiber. And I'm sure after they create the block of this or whatever it comes out, I'm sure there are areas of it that are more or less covered in just little voids and things like that. And they probably, you know, whoever creates the block or sells the block probably, you know, uh, cuts areas of it out that are voidless. And perhaps those are exclusive to, you know, the, or, or purchased, uh, you know, for more money by um, companies and manufacturers and makers trying to create a knife in a higher tier, right? Some, I, so that's just my assumption. Um, I don't know everything about that. That is not fact. I'm not a professional. That's just a guess. But as far as voids go on carbon fiber, this is pretty minor. It's really not something that bothers me. In fact, I hadn't noticed it until I zoomed all the way up on the camera and I'm seeing this. And the definition on the camera in this case is actually better than what I'm seeing in real light. In real light, I don't, unless I turn it at exactly the right angle, I can't see it. And to, truthfully, I can't feel it. So whatever. It's really not that big of a deal to me. Really like the position of the thumb stud. Really like the shape of the thumb stud. It's very easy to engage. Uh, and then the frame lock also makes it easy to disengage. There's a nice little area where the blade comes down on your fingernail or the, the little sharpening choil uh, connects with your fingernail nicely so you don't have to worry about accidentally cutting yourself. Happy with that, definitely. As far as the edges all the way around go, nicely knocked down. No issues with that at all. The shape of the handle makes it real easy to uh, hang on to. You you kind of can run your finger all the way up here behind the blade. There's not really an area that screams like you're you're safe here. 
but you can choke up on this knife. The problem is, is that there, the thumb stud is really in the cutting path. I mean, look at this. Look how much of the blade, right, is in the cutting path. It's like <laughs> half an inch. If you're cutting at an, most of your cuts are going to be like this, right? Because what you, that's the, if you're going to draw the belly of a, of the blade through material, you're likely not going to be cutting straight down. You're going to be cutting like this. But if you're like me and you use knives periodically to break down cardboard boxes, uh, this position right here and cutting straight into a thick piece of cardboard is something that can be beneficial. But the area that you're going to have, you're going to have to be clear out here. So even choked up, you're quite a ways from that area, about half an inch. And the transfer of power into that cut, which does matter if the cardboard or the material, you're kind of like rubber, if it's really thick, yeah, you, you really do want to transfer as much power as possible into that cut. And it really helps if the cutting edge is right up against, you know, where your, your index finger rests. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, the, the design of the knife is, is one that yielded that. But it's not, again, it's not really that big of a deal. Most of the time you're going to be doing this. Most of the time you're just going, oh, cut open your bag of pretzels, Karen, or whatever. You know, that's generally what we're doing with our knives. But if you're really going to go out and use this, that thumb stud being in the cutting path is certainly going to cause a problem for some people. Um, this is uh, kind of a two-tone tumbled and satin finished blade in S35VN. You can see it says S35VN down there. And we've got some... Model, I don't, the model number thing, I don't understand why that needs to be there. And then it says Warrior on the other side. Much like the Cryo, it's small and you don't really see it unless you're looking for it, but we don't need the number right there. And I don't need to see Warrior in the hypothetical circumstance where I purchased this, which I did not. It was provided for review. If I had purchased this knife, then I know what it is, right? I mean, I'm looking at the listing. I, I don't need to see it on there, but it's not really that big of a deal. It's not causing a, an issue with utility. This tumbled area up here yields a nicely knocked down edge. And I've also noticed that up here where the satin area, well, no, it is a little bit sharper. Yeah, it's a little bit. So this up here, a little bit sharper, not bad. This area right here where it's tumbled, definitely knocked down a bit. So on these cryo, uh, these uh, um, uh, concept knives, if they're satin finished, they're likely to be a bit sharp up on the spine. If they are tumbled, right, there's your, your proof of that. It's not sharp until right there where it transitions to the satin finish. Not a big deal. Blade shape is very interesting. Uh, I don't know if we call this like a, it's kind of sheep's footy, kind of drop pointy, kind of, I don't know. Um, the edge gets, okay. Honestly, I thought it'd be a little bit thicker behind the edge than it is. It's still not the thinnest behind the edge, but will it cut? Is it done well? Yeah, it's definitely sharp. That belly up there, it's kind of interesting, you know, if you want to kind of do like a draw. There's, there's a drop at the tip, so it's going to be nice for opening packages, things like that. Um, it's not going to be really any worse than any other, you know, any better or worse than a lot of other knives in this uh, price range and in this tier. It's going to cut. It's going to cut pretty efficiently unless you're having to cut right up there behind your, your right in front of your finger, I guess. Uh, that thumb stud's in the cutting path, but the blade does look good. Everything is symmetrical. Everything looks high quality. There's a sharpening choil, but again, you know, it depends on what I go. You're supposed to be, I guess you're going to be clamping over here in the middle. So never mind. Sharpening tool is in the right place. Everything's good there. But um, yeah, it's really just the position of that thumb stud that kind of bothers me a bit. The jimping is semi-functional. You can see how they did that there. They cut it into the side. Aesthetically, it's cool. It's a little bit different, but there's not much function. It's There's not much traction here. It's just a little bit. So I don't know. It is what it is. Hardware looks good. I uh, wish it wasn't T6, but again, it is what it is. Titanium backspacer that uh, doubles as a lanyard hole. That's fine because it's out of the way of the pocket clip and is not being prioritized over the pocket clip. This knife carries not super deep, but not super shallow, just, just fine. Um, this has one of those pocket clips that because it's like this and not like this, when you push it over the material of your pants, it's kind of like set to fit a specific seam a specific thickness of seam. And if it's not exactly that, or it's thicker than that, it's going to fight it. That's why I like swoops. And when, you know, pocket clips like this, uh, if they're going to do that, I'd rather it be a slow rounded ramp this way and not curved over like that. This style of pocket clip will definitely fight some pants. I don't know why they do that. It's not likely to catch on very much because it is, you know, straight, not super obtrusive, but it's just kind of weird. It's okay. In and out of my pockets right now, it's not really a big deal. I can feel that area biting and fighting just a little bit. I don't have overly thick pants, but somebody who's wearing thick jeans or work pants, yeah, that's going to be bothersome to you. Um, but that's the, the choice that they made there. This has a steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over treble stop. That's great. Absolutely solid. No blade play up, down, left, or right. We're locking up at about 44. 
five percent, maybe fifty percent, something like that. This one came just slightly off centered. I tried to mess with the pivot a little bit. It was just slightly, just slightly off centered. Um, in this price range, the blades need to be centered. They should all be centered. I, I understand there are the there there is the occasional anomaly. You know, no matter how high quality, no matter how perfect, you know, the manufacturing is. You know, if we're talking about. Riat or uh, Bill Koenig or, uh, you know, Holt or Shirogorov, you know, those companies that are known for just ultra precision manufacturing, there's still a small chance, you know, that uh, one of their blades is going to be off center. So maybe I got one that wasn't on center because the other two, the other two concept knives that I got were absolutely on center. So maybe that this is just a, you know, situation where it wasn't, but I, I still, when I see that, I'm like, you know, I don't like to see that it's all, it's not rubbing. So that's fine. Everything else totally solid. There's no detent lash, anything like that. So it's it's good in that department. Um, so uh, again, what are the things that I can complain about? Um, it's it's I, I think the blade stock is a, a little bit excessively thick. I don't know why. I mean, like 145 thousandths or so would have been much better. 140 thousandths. I mean, especially at this profile, that would have yielded a, a much you know a little bit thinner behind the edge, but. And I, I wonder if all uh, concept knives are about that thick. You know, it's it's fine. It's still going to cut. It's not going to slow you down much in the, you know, geometry department versus, you know, other knives in this tier. Um, what really bothers me is how far into the cutting path that uh, thumb stud is, you know. But again, it's, I mean, it's it can be minor depending on what, you know, how you look at it. T6 screws, okay. Carbon fiber has a couple of voids in it. Okay, that's going to, that's fairly normal for this price range. Um... You know, uh, the, the centering thing does bother me. It's not rubbing. It's just slightly off. Perhaps some adjusting could fix that, but I'd like to see it come perfect from the factory. This one um, looks really, really nice, um, and it is built well. I mean, as far as, like, the fitment of the hardware, the, the finish work on the blade, and, like, it's not like there's a bunch of, like, quality control issues here. There are a bunch of odd design elements and one quality control issue. That's, that's what I'm looking at here. So... I'm not totally, sorry, I'm wiping my fingerprints off. I'm not totally in love with this design. I love the profile. I love how it looks. And if you like how this looks and all the, the only other things that you're concerned with are, is it made well? Is it built well? Yeah, it's definitely built well. The concept's quality is there. I mean, this feels like a solid, well-made object. It is the, it's a few of the design elements where I'm like, nah. Uh, you know, that, that kind of feeling. And then that one quality, that one QC issue with the centering being slightly off, again, you could potentially adjust that out. Um, but yeah, not 100% my favorite. It's so good. I think the people who pick it, if yours, if yours ends up being centered, then you're probably going to like this. If you're looking at this and thinking, I don't know that I really care about those other quarks that he's talking about. I like how it looks, right? If you end up getting one that's centered, then you're probably going to love this thing, right? These come in, I believe, right around the same mark as the uh, uh, the Cryo, probably 200 to 220. Um, I imagine they might be a little higher or lower depending on the variant. I imagine that there are, there are additional variants coming out. I've seen different variants of other concept knives coming out. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the if, if this thing was on center, I mean, judging by quality, it's there. For the design, uh, I feel like that money could be better spent on a better design, one that doesn't have some of the weird little things here and there. Um, but this is okay. It's all right. Not going to go on my most recommended playlist. I still enjoyed it though. It's still cool. I mean, it's definitely a high quality knife, um, but just, just not my favorite of the pack that I got from uh, Concept. Guys, I think that's going to be pretty much it today. I don't know that there's a whole lot more that I can say. I, uh, I suppose one of the things we didn't look at here, I'm going to mention it real quick. It does have the same type of stop pin. It's the internal stop pin that sort of follows the blade. Um, so that's nice. That's another, I'll, I'll give that, I'll give credit where it's due. I always like to see either external stops or if the stops are going to be internal to be attached to the blade, bracing on both sides of the frame, mitigating pressure away from the pivot as, as I always say. So that's good. But I, guys, I think that's to finish up the review. I think that's really all that I can talk about here. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.